Hello, and thank you all for joining us today to learn about annual credit reports, credit freezes, and fraud alerts. I am your host today, Jessica, and I'm with the Elder Watch program with AARP. It is a partnership with AARP and the Colorado Attorney General's Office. We do education and outreach across Colorado, and we have a volunteer led helpline that people can call in free of charge to anyone who needs help or would like more information about frauds and scams and to report companies or other things that are happening. You can check out all of our 2020 educational videos at this website here. And just note that all of our lines are muted, but you can ask questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the talk today. All right, so today we are going to talk about what is a credit report and why it matters. We're going to talk about how you can get that report and how often, and some uh, how to read the report, and then a little bit about um, what credit scores are and what people are talking about when they say your credit score, and then some information about how to protect your credit around an alert, a freeze, and monitoring, and what the difference between that alert and freeze is, and then end with a little bit of information for financial caregivers. So first off, what is on your credit report? Your credit report has lots of information, including your personal information, previous addresses, names, your social security number is listed there, it talks about your loan and credit histories and any of your histories of payments. Did you pay your bills on time? And was that collection ever brought into it? It has the length of your credit history. So what was the longest uh, issue of credit that you've had? And what are those limits for each of those pieces? There's also a list of the different inquiries that may have been put onto your account. And um, if you've had a bankruptcy in the last 10 years, it's going to be there too. Why does this matter? What your credit report has on it, it explains to lenders how you handle your bills and your money and whether they want to do business with you. And if so, at what interest rate they want to charge you. It may also affect your abilities to get a loan or a job. You it affects if you can buy or lease a car, even rent an apartment, or get a new cell phone provider plan. It also is your way to help guard yourself against identity theft. What, who can see this report is also a big deal. A lot of people can see this report, from banks to potential creditors, uh, loan lenders for cars, insurance providers for both personal insurance and car insurance, your mortgage lenders, your landlord, your utility companies, student loan providers, government agencies that might provide you with public assistance, and um, retail stores, even gaming casinos, if they're going to give you a, uh, you know, credit into the casino. The other important piece is you can see your credit report. But did you know that only 28% of Coloradoans ordered their credit report in the last 12 months from a, a survey that AARP Elder Watch did this year? We find that with only a few of us doing it, we really should be checking it more often. And we want to discuss how you can do that. So how do you get it? The best place to get it is through annualcreditreport.com. You want to make sure you're on the correct site before you order it. This is the official authorized by the federal government um, site to get your free report. You go to annual credit report and then you see you get the report from the three major credit bureaus, which are Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. You get all three of those from the one site. You can visit this website, which I'll show you here in a minute. You can also call a phone number and request it. You'll have to provide your personal information over the phone, and then they mail you a copy within 15 days, or you can order it through the mail by filling out the form. But let's really quick 
go to the site of annualcreditreport.com. And when you're on this site, annualcreditreport.com, you'll be able to see if you scroll down, it's brought by our three credit bureaus. You just say, request your free credit report. You fill out the form, you pick which of the three you want or all of them, and then you can do it again as you go. So you fill out the form. Here's the information they ask for, and we'll go into this more. You click next and it goes through the process. It is a simple site to be able to do this and you'll get your report instantly when you use the site versus if you called the phone number or if you completed it by mail. If you complete it by mail, this is what the form looks like. You do have to actually have this form and then you fill it out and then you mail it into their address and then they mail you back your report. What does this information ask? They'll ask you to provide your name, your address. If you've moved in the last two years, they ask you for your previous address as well. They, you have to provide your social security number and then your date of birth. We are, you know, we always are concerned when something's asking us for such personal information, but that's why we want to make sure we're getting our reports from the authorized location and that we're really um, doing this with to maintain our own identity and security as well. You may also have to answer some other questions to make sure that you are who you say you are. To maintain that security, they ask you some things that only you would know. A couple of examples here are, you know, what was the monthly payment of your most recent mortgage or what zip code has ever been part of your address because it has that history of what your address is. And so you'll be able to answer those questions. Trick, sometimes it's none of the above. And so we want to make sure we have that correct answer. And how often can you do this? Well, um, annual credit report would tell you that you can do it annually from each of those three bureaus. They allow you to check it once from each of them in 12 months. But because of the Equifax breach last year, they have starting in 2020 this year, they've allowed people to get an additional six credit reports through the Equifax website directly or by calling their phone number. And that's in addition to the three credit reports that you get from annualcreditreport.com. Now, in addition to that, until April of 2021, we can access our credit report weekly from all three bureaus from annualcreditreport.com. So you can check your credit every week from all three bureaus if you wanted to, at least through April of 2021. Now, I don't know if weekly is really necessary to do, but you can. And that's the great thing is we want to be proactive and empowering to check our own information. Okay, so now you know how to do it, where to get it, and how often you can. So now you have this copy, how do you read it? All right, so reading your credit report can look a little bit confusing, but really it's quite simple. So I'll show you an example that the website has of a full part two, but basically what it has is the name of each of your lines of credit, like American Express, the contact information for that line of credit, some information about it. What loan type is it? What's the highest balance it's ever have? What's the limit that, to that balance? How often has it been paid? You'll see a lot of these, hopefully, green OKs or check marks saying you've been paying that bill on time, each one of those. The problem is if we don't pay our bill on time or if there's, you know, months that we're skipping payments, that will show up there too. And that will tell a potential lender, hey, they don't always pay their bills quite like they're supposed to. What you'll want to do is kind of pay attention to this and make sure that American Express really is a credit card that you have and you have in your possession to ensure that it's not something that was opened by someone else using your name. 
I'm also going to quickly share with you. We're going to go back to our website and be able to see the. Oh, goodness, I'm not going to. We'll go like this. Understanding your Experian credit report. This is just the Experian website that had an example for us where it shows our, pers our personal information here. The, your name will be here and your social security numbers, any addresses that you've lived in, um, and as well as sometimes other people that are related to you. If you have a, a joint mortgage with a spouse or another individual, it might be listed here. When we go to your account, much like that example before, it has the account name, Greenpoint Mortgage, the account number, how much the balance is, when it was opened. You'll be able to kind of see all of the information about it um, and what payments are. And then hopefully a lot of green OKs to say it's looking well. And then um, you can see a list of all of them. So this is going to include your credit cards. It's going to include mortgages, student loans, other sites, other sorts of loans, that sort of information. And then it will also have examples of closed accounts. So if you've had anything that you had open before, previous cards, previous accounts with uh, banks or financial institutions, you'll see them listed and tell what type of it is and the addresses for them as well. Here's an example of a negative account or a missing payment. This was a credit card and you'll see that they've had some a high balance of 2000 600 with a credit limit of 8,800. Um, but when we go through, there's a couple of potential yellows but from recently. So they were doing great in 2012, 13, 14, 15. And then there's some interesting things happening recently, which might make a lender be questioning this. All right. We'll stop looking at that because uh, we'll go back to our thing. So this is the sort of idea of what you'd want it to look like. So if you don't see green check marks, maybe you see some negative information. Um, negative information isn't wrong or incorrect information. It's, it's the correct information, but it might have a negative impact on your uh, credit score or your line of credit, which would mean people might be in unsure if they want to uh, work with you or lend to you or, or provide you with that cell phone plan that you'd like. Negative information can be on there for seven years, and you'll see bankruptcies on there for 10. So keep that in mind of all of our negative information will be available there for quite some time, and we want to make sure that we keep our information um, are financially safe and everything is correct and we're paying bills on time. But the thing is, if there's anything that is false information or inaccurate information, that is important to dispute and to make those adjustments and change it, which is why we want to keep, be keeping an eye out on this report to make sure that that information is all accurate. So if it is not, you want to contact that credit bureau, that company, whether it's TransUnion, Experian, or Equifax. And when you contact them, you want to dispute this. There's, you know, letters out there of how to word these things. If you're doing it online, often there's a little button called dispute, and you just click it and explain which part it is. You have to have evidence or um, descriptions as to why this is not. Um, something that it should be on your account. You also want to tell that information provider. So if we go back to here and American Express was not your account, you'd want to contact American Express with that information listed to be able to close that or dispute that that wasn't you. You can get more information about disputing uh, disputing inaccuracies from the Federal Trade Commission. They've got a really great um, article to tell us more about that. And you can also call the AARP Elder Watch Program and a volunteer can explain things to you and walk you through those steps as well. 
Now, a brief little bit about credit scores. Your credit score is not usually on your report. This is the part we hear a lot of songs and dances on commercials about getting your credit score, and people will be talking or bragging about what their score is or thinking that that's the piece that's the most important. That piece is important when it comes to um, decide for lenders to decide if they're going to work with you or, and if so, at what interest rates, but that does not have anything to do with your identity necessarily. The score is a way for you to keep an idea as to how well you are performing, so your grade or your score, but it is not necessarily how much of this is related to your identity and keeping it safe. It's far more important to pay attention to that report and look at all of the parts that are on there to ensure that they are correct on there. The score is calculated by looking at all of those things and then some formulas to figure out what makes that score, how long you've had it, how much money, what's your ratio of credit that you could have versus debt that you're currently holding, if you've had late payments, all of those things. But there are also different models and different versions and different timing of it can change those scores a lot too. You will find you'll get a free score, often from a lot of your credit card companies, and certainly from your mortgage lender. If you're starting to receive a mortgage, they're required to give you what your score is. You can purchase the score from those three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, if you're interested in knowing what that score is. Also, there are third-party companies that offer your credit scores. Some will say that they're free, but read the fine print to make sure you're not enrolling in a program that you don't want to enroll or that will end up charging you later. Also be aware that uh, some of these companies are offering free credit scores in a score version that is maybe not the same model or version of what your lender would be doing or your credit card companies or Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion themselves. So keeping that in mind to see if they're using the same models and versions before you pay to receive that score. Okay, so our next piece will be on protecting our credit. So there's now that we've seen our our reports, we know it's all accurate. This is the information we want to have on there. What do you do to keep it that way? There's a few options. We can, we're gonna talk about the difference between a credit freeze and a fraud alert, and then also some credit monitoring programs. One thing to know is that doing these, pro these processes does not stop you from using your current credit cards or lines of credit. Uh, Freezing it doesn't mean you don't have to pay that mortgage bill anymore. It won't even it won't and it won't prevent charges from the on those existing accounts. If you have that American Express credit card, this doesn't stop someone from using that card number. You have to monitor all of your banks and your credit cards, your insurance statements, and other statements all separately in addition to these sorts of things. This stuff will help us to limit any new items from coming onto the report that isn't supposed to be there. So the first one, a fraud alert. A fraud alert is free. You contact one of those three bureaus and then they will contact the other two for you. It makes it quick and easy. You just have to do that for one phone call or one reach out to connect with them and they'll reach out to the other two. And this lasts for one year. A fraud alert makes it so that if a creditor wants to check your report to, before opening up a new account, they have to take some steps to try to verify if this was you. So you'll provide them with your information, say you want a fraud alert, and then they are gonna reach out to you. Someone will reach out to you if they say, hey, are you really trying to open up this new account? And then you get to decide yes or no and be able to tell them that this is really truly you. 
This is a great option for people who are maybe concerned of a potential breach or are afraid they possibly provided their social security number, date of birth, or other information to someone that um, is fraudulent or potentially a scammer. You could look at a free fraud alert for one year to ensure that you know, when you're not checking your credit report, it's reaching out to you if there's some action or movement on there. The next one is a credit freeze. With a credit freeze, you have to reach out to all three of the bureaus yourself. It takes a little more time and you'll want to provide uh, a, your, all of your information and get a username and password and a PIN number, basically a PIN number, so that if you want to list it or unfreeze it, you'll want to prove that it is you the next time you do that too. A freeze makes it harder for someone else to open up any new accounts. Um, it also makes it harder for you to open up new accounts until you lift the freeze or unfreeze it. It's actually quite simple to do a temporary lift if you reach out and say, hey, I know I'm about to be getting a new credit card and I'd like to lift this or I know I'm going to get a car and I'm going to need a new loan. I want to lift my, my freeze for 30 days while I do that and then it will freeze it again for you. All of this is free to do. This used to cost money and now it's free, which means that so much, so much more powerful for us to take advantage of these free resources out there to help us maintain control over our credit report. This doesn't affect anything around your ability to apply for a job, rent an apartment, or buy insurance. They don't pull the hard, um, hard pulls of your account, your credit check, so you should be able to have no problems with any of those things, even with a freeze. Some of the others about getting a bank or a lending might have to have it be lifted or unfreeze to do so. The last of this is credit monitoring. So you can monitor it yourself. Now that you know the steps of how and where to get that credit report and how to read that credit report, you can monitor it yourself, whether that be once a year or once every four months, once from each of the three credit bureaus, once a year. So ideally people say you should check it once with one of them and then four months later with the other and four months later from the other since you can do it 12, every 12 months from each of the three. Nowadays, you could check it every week if you wanted to and monitor your credit report yourself. You can also get free services quite often from after data breaches. Unfortunately, there's so many data breaches that are constantly happening. And when you get an alert, if you've ever had one before or get one in the future, you'll see a notice that this company is offering a one year of free credit monitoring or longer or some sort of prop process like that, take advantage of those when they come up and you can get this free monitoring through an outside company just by signing up. Pay attention though to make sure that you're not signing on to start paying the payments after the one free year is done. And on those lines, you can pay companies to do it for you as well. There's lots of different credit monitoring companies out there that will do some of the same things that we're talking about today. They'll put an alert so that they'll reach out to you. They'll let you know when there's a new inquiry being made on that credit report and then check it from time to time. They have it available and for you to access anytime you want instead of just, you know, when you pull your report, whether that be three times a year or every week until April, that sort of idea. You can pay a company to do that for you. Some of them are um, by the month and some of them are annual charges. Remember, keep in mind to see what they're doing, how often they're checking that. It's a live check constantly. If they're checking and monitoring from all three of the bureaus or just one of the bureaus, there's a few different things to keep in mind or just monitor it yourself as well. A last little piece here on financial caregivers. 
So if you are taking care of someone else and you're concerned of what their report might look like, you can, as a financial caregiver, offer, request a copy of a credit report of a protected consumer, so someone that you've been appointed guardianship of, uh, you can check their credit report and you can even issue a credit freeze on their behalf. There is some extra steps to this to be able to prove that you are an appointed guardian, but this is an important thing to think about if you are a caregiver for someone. And a little note here too, if you know of someone who has recently died and you are in charge of some of their estates or you're an executor, you will want to send a notice to one of the three credit reporting companies, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, to indicate that that person has died and then they will share that information with the other two. You can also request a credit report if you happen to want to know kind of that whole listing of all of the potential debts that are out there in that individual's name, you can request that credit report. I see we have some questions coming in and I'm gonna answer those. And in the meantime, I have listed here our resources of the different websites and phone numbers for all three of the credit bureaus, as well as the annualcreditreport.com website and phone number. So, can we trust the credit bureaus with our social security number? Great question. And this one comes up a lot now because Equifax, one of the three major credit bureaus, did have a breach a couple of years ago, and there are some challenges involved with that. Of course, we want to be able to trust these three and make sure that you're working directly with these three credit bureaus and with the annualcreditreport.com site, as those are the ones that are um, approved by the federal government for checking our credit report and authorized by them. With every company, there's going to be some risks of involvement with you know, our social security numbers, and so we want to make sure that we do our due diligence of, you know, working with these companies with the understanding that sometimes things happen and that's why we're checking our reports to begin with. So if you're checking your credit reports, this is the way that we stay on top to make sure that no bad people are doing things with anything with our, our uh, social security numbers or our identity. Do I suggest checking your credit report online or over the phone? I suggest doing what is most comfortable for you. Doing it online is the fastest way. It is the easiest way. You'll have the information right there and it is a secure site. That being said, if you're an individual who is not comfortable on the computer, I don't want you and your anxiety to be raised because you're doing this important piece through a website. If it is easier for you, you can do it over the phone. That being said, you often will have to mail things through the mail to them or get the stuff in the mail. And that can be a little bit more of a concern when we're having our entire credit report being mailed to us um, through the mail and whether there could be potential people that would get access to that. Doing it online is a safe way to do it if you feel comfortable with that. And AARP Elder Watch can provide some assistance with this. We now have a program with our financial literacy to program to help you pull your credit report. We have volunteers who can help walk through this process with you and help you understand and read your exact report and explain what different things mean on that, what to do if you want to dispute it, all of that stuff. You can contact the AARP Elder Watch. Our helpline phone number is listed here. And from calling us, we can set you up with a volunteer who can work one-on-one -on -one with you to help you through these stages in this process. I hope that all of this has been a helpful way for you to understand your annual credit report, what the report looks like, how to get it, and what our three credit bureaus do. 
If you ha are interested in more or have other questions, feel free to give the AARP Elder Watch a phone call. We are happy to help you. Our phone number is 800-222-4444, option two. Thank you for attending today, and we look forward to having you join us in one of our other ones in the future.